We're finally on the last two pages of um, logic, and uh, to do the first, the last two pages, we want to review a little bit page 17 or um, page 16, where they introduce the concept of converse, inverse, and contrapositive. Okay. Now, uh, a regular statement looks like this. We always use P. We always use Q. So P implies Q, or if P then Q or P, therefore Q. Um, there are three statements defined from this direct statement, and those are converse, inverse, and contrapositive. In a converse, we say that Q implies P. It's the opposite direction, right? And for the inverse, we say the negative. It's, we say not P implies not Q, okay? And then finally, the contrapositive we take the negative of the uh, converse, okay? So we say not Q implies not P, okay? So if you have this original statement P implies Q, uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that any of the other three are true, okay? So, but that's what we're going to analyze here on page 17 and 18. So in 9M, for each of the arguments A through S, determine whether it is an, a valid argument if it is invalid, give a counterexample. Write down the converse, inverse, and contrapositive statements. Determine which of those are valid arguments. For each invalid argument, give a counterexample. Okay. Um, so, let's take the first one. If ABCD is a square, then ABCD is a quadrilateral. Okay. So, if it's a square, are all squares quadrilaterals? And yes, they are. So. Um, yeah, we say it's valid, so it's valid, oops, I wrote in the wrong place again, valid, and then uh, it says, uh, write down the converse, inverse, and contrapositive, so we'll do that too, um, let's see, the converse is, um, if ABCD is a quadrilateral, it is a square. And then uh, let's do the inverse. The inverse is um, if ABCD is not a square, then ABCD is not a quadrilateral. And then finally we have Contrapositive. Contrapositive would be if A, B, C, D is, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, if A, B, C, D is not a quadrilateral, then it is not a square. Okay, now we're going to analyze each one of these and see if it's valid or invalid. If it's invalid, then we're going to give a counterexample. Okay, so let's see. Um, first one. Uh, if ABC is quadrilateral, it is a square. Now we know that's not true because you know quadrilaterals include squares, rectangles, um, quadrilaterals that are neither squares or rectangles. So uh, it says to give a counterexample, the easiest thing is to draw one. Now there is a quadrilateral that is not a square. It's not a rectangle or a parallelogram either. If ABCD is not a square, so this is actually invalid, and we gave a counterexample. If ABCD is not a square, then ABCD is not a quadrilateral. Um, if he's not a square, then he's not a quadrilateral. Well, that's not true. We can give the same counterexample again. Um, we're going to give this counterexample. So let's see. If it's not a square, and this is not a square, then it's not a quadrilateral. But it is a quadrilateral. So yeah, that's invalid also. And the last one, if ABCD is not a quadrilateral, then it is not a square. Um, not a quadrilateral. Yeah, so it's not a quadrilateral means it's not a four-sided figure. So that would be, you know, like a pentagon or something. And yeah, so if it's not a quadrilateral, then it is definitely not a square also. So this is valid. Okay. So you can see that, like, depending on the on the uh, you know the converse, inverse, or uh, contrapositive, 
some of them are valid and some of them are not invalid. Just because the statement is valid doesn't mean any of the others are going to be valid. Let's uh, move on to the next one. Okay, so uh, first of all, is this statement valid? If an integer is divisible by 4, then it is divisible by 2. And we'll say yes, that's valid. Typing in the wrong place again, valid. Then we go to number 2. Now we are going to do the uh, the inverse, or no, not, not the, the converse, right? Converse. The converse is, the converse is that um, uh, it, we just reverse it. If a integer is divisible by 4, by 2, then it is divisible by Four. If an integer is divisible by two, then it's divisible by four. Um, not necessarily. Invalid. For example, four. Uh, or I'm sorry, two. The, the the number the integer two is divisible by two, but it's not divisible by four. Okay. Okay. So it's what do they call that? A counterexample. Counterexample equals two. Okay. Let's go to the next one. So the next one is um, the converse. And now we're going to do the inverse. The inverse is just taking the negative of both of the ones in the original uh, statement. So if an integer is not divisible by 4, then it is not divisible by 2. Uh, not divisible by 4. It's not, it's not divisible by 2. Well, let's see. What about uh, what about two? Now two is again uh, counterexample is two, right? Because if you have two, two is not divisible by four. It is not divisible by two. No, it is. So there is an example which proves that one wrong, right? Okay, next one. Um, the contrapositive. The contrapositive is taking the negative of the um, Converse, okay. So the converse is the first one here. So we, we're going to say um, if an integer is not divisible by two, then it is not divisible by four. Let's see, not divisible by two, then it is not divisible by four. Okay. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Um, I can't think of any number where that's that's that would be false. Like, for example, um, 3 is not divisible by 2. It's also not divisible by 4, right? Okay, so this is valid. Okay, moving on. Uh, if an integer is divisible by 2, then it is an even integer. And that is, that's true, right? It's valid. Now we're to 2. We're going to do the converse, which is we're going to reverse the direction. If an integer is an even integer, number, then it is divisible by 2. If an integer is an even number, then it is divisible by 2. That's true, right? Now we're going to do the, um, the inverse, which is you take the negative of the um, original statement. If an integer is not divisible by 2, then it is not divisible by, then it is not an even integer. That's true, too. Okay, and finally, we're going to do the contrapositive, which is going to be the negative of this, uh, this, this one right here. Okay, so it would be if an integer is not an even number, the there's like a huge lag here I noticed sometimes it's when Brad plays Minecraft if an integer is not an even number then uh, it is not divisible by two if an integer is not an even number then it is not divisible by two yeah that's valid too so look at that all three are valid in this case right and why does that happen because 
one is practically the definition of the other, right? An even integer is divisible by two. If it's divisible by two, it is an even integer. We have two, like an equivalent statement here. If you have an equivalent statement, like P implies Q and Q implies P, then everything's going to be valid, okay? All right. If an integer is divisible by both four and two, then it is divisible by eight. Um, let's think about that. I was about to say it's valid, but now I'm not so sure. Um, so let's give an example of something that's divisible by four and two, like the easiest example. It would be four. Four is divisible by four and is divisible by two. Is it divisible by eight? No, it's not. So that's invalid. And the counterexample is four. Okay, now we're going to do the converse. So if an integer is divisible by eight, it is divisible by four and two. Yes, that's true. Now uh, we're going to do the inverse. If an integer is not divisible by both 4 and 2, then it is not divisible by 8. An integer is not divisible by 4 and 2, for example, I don't know, 3 or 2 itself by both 4 and 2, then it's not divisible by 8. Yeah, that's valid. Okay. Um, if, and then we're going to do the contrapositive. If an integer is not divisible by 8, then it is not divisible by 4 and 2. Let's see. If it's not divisible by 8, then it is not divisible by 4 and 2. That's not true, because you could have, like, the number 4. 4 is not divisible by 8, but it is divisible by 4 and 2. So we'll say invalid, and the counterexample is 4. Okay. Best thing to do is, like, Find counterexamples that are um, simple as possible. Okay? This thing has a huge lag. Okay, it's just finishing up, isn't it? Okay, we're going to move on to uh, the next page now. Last page. Uh, the problem says, um, if the product of two integers is even, then the two integers are both even. Okay, if the two product of two integers are even, then the two integers are both even. Um, I can think of a number where that's not true. For example, um, let's see. What about um, two times three equals six? Two times three equals six. Two times three equals six. So if the product of two integers is even, for example, 6, then the two integers are both even. No, because 3 is not even. So that's a counterexample. So it's invalid, invalid, and counterexample. Counterexample is, OK? All right. Uh, if the product of two integers is even, then two integers are both even. Okay. And what about the converse? The converse is reversing the order. So if two integers are both even, then uh, the product of two integers is even. Okay. If two integers are both even, then the product of two integers is even. Yeah, that's true. If you start out with two even integers and you multiply them together, then you're going to get um, you're going to get uh, an even integer. Now we're going to do the inverse. We're going to take the not of both the original um, one right there. So we're going to say if the product of two integers is not even, then uh, the two integers are not both even. Okay, so let's see what that is. Um, if the product of two integers is not even, then the two integers are not both even. I think that's true, because if the product of two integers is not even, then uh, neither of the integers is even. So it's, you can even go farther than that. Finally, the contrapositive, if two integers are not both even, then the product of two integers 
is not even, if two integers are not both even, then the product of two integers is not even. Well, that's not true. Look at 2 times 3, right? If you have 2 times 3, invalid counterexample is 2 times 3, right? Because if the two integers are not both even, like here, 1's 2, 1's 3, then the product of the two integers, 6, is not even. It is even. So we have a counterexample. So that's definitely invalid. Okay, K. If the product of two integers is odd, then the two integers are both odd. If the product of two integers is odd, then the two integers are both odd. Um, so first we'll do the uh, count the the converse. So we just reverse it. If two integers are both odd, then the product of two integers is odd. If two integers, oh, I forgot. Is this is is the first statement in valid or invalid? Let's do that first. So the first statement. First statement. If the product of two integers is odd, then the two integers are both odd. That's true, right? The only way to get an odd product is to multiply together two odd numbers, like 5 times 7 is 35. If you multiply any even number, time, even times an odd number, you're going to end up with an even product. Okay? All right. Now we do the uh, converse. If two integers are both odd, then the product of the two integers is odd. And that's true, too. That's valid. Because um, in order to get an even number, one of, the, one of the numbers that you're multiplying has to be odd. Okay? Uh, now let's do the um, inverse. The inverse is just taking the negative of both sides. If the product of two integers is not odd, then the two integers are not both odd. If the product of two integers is not odd, so then it would be even, okay, if the product of two integers is even, then the two integers are not both odd. That's true, right? One of them has to be even, at least. Okay. Last one, we're doing the contrapositive, so we take the, we take the inverse of that, so uh, the negative of that. So if two integers are not both odd, then the Pro, then the product of two integers is is not odd. Let me think. If two integers are not both odd, um, then the product of two integers is not odd. So if two integers are not both odd, so one of them is even, then the product of two integers is not odd. That's true, because like if you have, it's saying if they're not both odd, then one of them is going to be even, or both are even, then the product is going to be even also, and that's true. Okay, so these are all true also. Let's go back and look at the statement. If the product of two integers is odd and two integers are both odd, yeah, that's uh, that's a case where you know it's um, p um, is equivalent to q, right? One implies the other. Okay, so that's that's the reason why everything comes out to be valid. Wow, we still have uh, four left. Let's keep going here. Uh, the square of an odd integer is odd. The square of an odd integer is odd. Okay. So I think that's valid, right? Because, like, um, basically you're saying, okay, if you multiply two odd numbers together, you get an odd number, and we already said that that's true, right? Now let's do the converse. The converse is if... Um, If uh, if the square is odd, then the uh, integer is odd. If the square is odd, then the integer is odd. Yes, that's true. Valid. Okay, and then uh, let's do the inverse. Um, The square of a not odd integer is not odd. That means the square of an even integer is even. The square of an even integer, that's true. Right? Finally, the counter 
the contrapositive. We're going to take the um, we're going to take the um, the not of of this statement here. So we say if the if the square is not odd, then the integer is not odd. If the square is not odd, so if the square is even, then the integer is even. That's true. Okay. So again, you, we have a case where uh, p implies q, or p is equivalent to q. p is equivalent to q. p is equivalent to q. So that's why everything turns out to be valid. If you have the if you if the square is an odd number, then the original number is odd also. Okay, that works both ways. All right. Oh, if the quadrilateral ABCD has four equal sides, then ABCD has four equal angles. Okay. Let's think about that. If a quadrilateral has four equal sides, then ABCD has four equal angles. No, not usually, because like I can think of a parallelogram. Parallelogram. Four equal sides, angles are not all equal. So, no, that's invalid. Okay, and then we look at the, um, the con what do you call it, the converse of this? So, the converse is going to be um, if ABCD has four equal angles. Then ABCD has four equal sides, and that's invalid, right? Because my contrapositive, my counterexample is a rectangle. A rectangle has four equal angles, but it doesn't have four equal sides. Now let's do the um, inverse. So we're going to do not for for this original statement. We're going to say if a quadrilateral ABCD is does not have four does not have four equal sides then uh, ABCD does not have four equal angles if the quadrilateral ABCD does not have four equal sides then ABCD does not have four equal angles okay um, Let's see, does not have four equal sides, then does not have four equal angles. That's not true, right? Because you can have a rectangle. Okay, if it does not have four equal sides, then maybe so. So invalid counterexample is a rectangle again. Okay, now the counter contrapositive. The contrapositive, you take uh, the uh, knot of this. So if ABCD has does not have does not have four equal sides then ABCD does not have uh, angles does not have four equal angles angles then ABC does not have four does not have four equal sides um, that's not true what about a rhombus right a rhombus a rhombus has four equal sides, doesn't have four equal angles. So, yeah, so we'll say not true, invalid, counter example equals a rhombus. Okay, almost the last one. If x cubed equals 27, then x equals 3. So we'll write the um, uh, if it's valid or invalid, it's valid. Well, no, it's not really because negative. Uh, no, that's okay. Sorry about that. Inv it's valid. Yeah. I was thinking it could be negative, but it's cubed. Okay, then I'm going to write the converse. The converse is if x is 3, then x cubed is 27. Yeah, that's valid, right? Uh, now let's do the inverse. If x cubed is not 27, then x is not 3. Uh, yeah, that's valid too, right? And finally, uh, we're going to do the um, K 
count contrapositive, which would be if x is not 3, then x cubed is not 27. That's valid too, right? If x cubed is not 3, then x, if x is not 3, then x cubed is not 27. Okay? So yeah, this is because, you know, it's a, um, this statement is um, one implies the other. They're equivalent, so that's why everything turns out to be valid again. Finally, the last one. Uh, if x cubed is less than 27, then x is less than 3. So let's see. Uh, first, we're going to evaluate if it's valid. Um, if x cubed is less than 27, then x is less than 3. Mm, maybe. Yeah, OK. If x cubed is less than 27, yeah, I think that's true. Valid. OK. Now, uh, we're going to write the converse. If x is less than 3, then x cubed is less than 27. Yeah, that's true, also valid. Okay. Then we're going to do the inverse. If x cubed is not less than 27, then x is not less than 3. If x cubed is not less than 27, meaning it's greater than 27, or 27 or greater, then x is not less than 3. Okay, yeah, I think that's valid too. And then finally, the contrapositive. The contrapositive would be if uh, x is not less than 3, then x cubed is not less than 27. So if x is not less than 3, they're saying x is 3 or more. If x is 3 is more, then x cubed is 27 or more. And I think that's valid also. So yeah, this is another statement where, um, you know, they're equivalent. So all the statements, the converse, the inverse, and the contrapositive are all uh, true also. Okay, and uh, let's just wait a few seconds while this thing updates. It's very slow, isn't it? Rad must be playing a lot of high bandwidth games. Come on, let's, let's uh, hurry up. Come on, update here. Oh, there we go, iPad. I don't know who's, who's, if the problem, yeah, it's probably, probably the problem with the PC. Okay? And then I'm going to write valid, valid, and then I'll be done. Goodbye.